Hello everyone, Michelle Emma here from Pilates with me. And today I just wanted to give you guys a quick little routine full of stretches that can help you with your sciatica. Sciatica is that terrible, terrible feeling that we get that goes from the bum all the way down the back of the leg and it's caused from our sciatic nerve being trapped. So maybe those hips are too close, maybe you've been leaning one side more than the other, maybe you've been running a lot extra and your back's taking on a lot of pressure. Either way, these stretches are going to help open up the hips and hopefully help release that sciatic nerve. So all you're going to need for today's session is a flex band. If you don't have a flex band, then a hand towel or something that you can use, maybe even a rope to help you stretch your hamstrings. And then later on, near the end of the stretch class, you're going to need a little chair. It doesn't necessarily have to be a chair with a back, just a little little raise that you can sit on it and then place your foot on it. Okay, so when you guys are ready, grab everything that you need and let's get started. Okay, so let's get started lying on our backs. You're going to take that flex band. If you've got quite a long one and you want more of a pull, then fold it in half. Otherwise, just leave it open or grab your towel or rope. We're going to start with placing the right foot in that strap. And if you can, extend your left leg just to get it out the way. And just remember, you don't have to have your leg up at 90 degrees. If it's doing this, rather lower that angle of your leg so that you can lock your knee. You're going to engage that core. And we're just going to relax those shoulders, make sure that foot is nice and straight. And let's just breathe. Really pushing that heel towards the ceiling, releasing that whole back of the leg. You really want to place the rope or towel or whatever you're using on that ball of your foot so that you can pull the toes down. You might not be as low as me, you might be up here, but as long as you're trying to pull it down, it's going to activate the back of the leg a lot more and you're going to get a deeper stretch. Now we're going to go into the side of the leg called your iliotibial band. So you're going to hold with your left hand and you're just going to take that right leg slightly across your body. Now it's so normal to get like tinglings going up the foot, back of the knee, ankle, toes, completely normal. You want to keep both hips straight and flat on that ground. And that idea is more about taking that foot to the opposite ear as opposed to taking that foot wide across. So we're just going to hold it for another 20 seconds, keep that foot straight, keep those toes flexed. And when it starts releasing, see if you can go a little bit deeper. And then gently bring it back to the center. You're going to swap it over. So we're going to take that left leg in. Right leg goes straight down if you can. And pull the left toes down. Now you can see my left leg is a lot tighter. These toes don't go down as much as the other side. I'm going to have to breathe and relax a lot more on this side. You will generally know when you've had enough of the stretch, but try to hold it for 30 seconds. 10 seconds isn't really enough time for you to feel that full effect of the stretch. Relax your shoulders. Engage that core. And then you're going to hold the straps with your right hand. Drop your left hand, slightly take that left leg across to the right side. Again, one side going to be a lot tighter than the other. Pull the toes down, push the heel up, and then try and pull towards that opposite ear. With every exhale, see if you can go a little bit deeper. 
obviously this is going to hurt a lot more on the side that you're feeling that sciatica but try and do it on both legs just to help release both sides of your hips you're going to bring it back to the center and you're going to release it down now just pop your strap to the side we don't need it anymore you're going to take your right ankle onto your left knee you're going to get a nice little imprint lift that left leg up and either grab from the back of the leg or the top of the shin and just pull it in trying to get that right calf to the chest without rounding your lower back too much. So you want to try to keep that tail going down, pull it in and push that right knee away from you. Again, you want to activate the back of the leg. So you're going to flex your feet, try not point, flex, and then just hold. This is probably one of the most effective ones, the one where you'll feel most of the relief in that sciatic nerve. You're going to take one more deep breath in, give it another tight pull, and then you're going to keep the legs at that figure four point position and then just open the arms out to the side and we're just going to spin side to side, twist side to side, roll side to side. Relax those shoulders. When you go one side, you're going to feel more of a stretch in the one hip. As opposed to the other side, you probably feel it more in your back, in that thoracic spine. Just go for another 10 seconds. You've got slight engagement of your core. And then bring it back to center. You're going to swap it over. So let's do left ankle onto the right knee. We pull it in. Push that left knee away. These stretches are also really good for you to do after a run, especially these static exercises, because you're obviously going to tense up all those muscles in your lower back and your bum during your run. So we need to release those muscles in order to help that sciatic nerve from not being pinched. Take one more deep breath in. Pull it a little bit more. Then you're going to keep that figure of four position, open the arms, and we're just going to sway side to side. Maybe you're going to get a few nice clicks. Two more. And then bring it all the way back to center. Release it, hug both of your knees in. And then you're going to rock yourself all the way up to a seated position. So now from here, we're going to go into your 90-90 stretch. So if you're sitting on a mat, it's a lot easier because then you can direct yourself with the boundary lines. You're going to move your right thumb all the way to the side of the mat. The right leg goes at a right angle. The left leg goes at a left angle. Now, some people who get into this position immediately cramp in that left hip. So try again, come out of it, go into it, see if it doesn't cramp again. And if it does cramp again, then you may have to loosen the stretch up a bit by bringing that foot in closer. But the end result is 90 degree, 90. You then twist towards the back leg. So you're trying to get both bum cheeks down onto that mat. And then you're going to scoop the tummy in reach your hands forward and see how low you can go in that gap between that heel and that knee. And you're just going to relax. Now this really twists the one hip out and the one hip in. It helps to create space between that sacrum, stretches the bum, it opens up this hip, which might not be enjoyable. See if you can go a little bit deeper. Or 
or walk it all the way back up. If it feels good, stay in it. You choose how long you want to stay in this position for. Move that left thumb all the way over to the left side of the mat. Right knee at a right angle, left knee at a right angle. Now, this is my stiffer side, so don't laugh. You're going to try and twist towards that back bun. Reach yourself forward. And get that nice pull. Scoop the tummy in. Keep the feet flexed. Try breathe into the rib cage. Biggest thing is just to find some relaxation. And then walk it all the way back up. Now that should have opened your hips up for the next one. So you're going to lay back down on the mat just one last time. You're going to spread those feet a little bit wider than the mat and then roll the knees towards each other. So the higher the feet to the hips, the better for the stretch. But if your knees hurt, then you need to move those feet a little bit lower. Do not let your knees touch each other because if they rest on each other, you're taking away that force of gravity and you're taking away that deepened stretch. So just open your arms, let gravity pull you down. Make sure that your knees are level. You don't want one higher than the other, which you might find if you've got really bad sciatica, the sciatic side's gonna be a little bit higher. A very strange feeling. It pulls from that base of your bum all the way around into the groin and you can literally feel those hips rotating inwards but then because they're rotating inwards that sacrum is splitting apart allowing for all those nerves all those muscles to kind of relax and get a breather now you're just going to rock it side to side so you're going to open the one knee out push the other leg in this is the leg that you are focused on you want to feel that nice itb quad thigh everything stretching and then you roll it to the other side. Just do that a few more times. And if you want a little bit of an extra pull, you hold it in position, take the opposite angle, ankle onto the opposite knee, pull down. Might even go all the way into those obliques. You might not actually be feeling much at all. We're going to lift it up and you're going to swap it over. So take that other leg wide, roll it in, opposite ankle, opposite knee. Let gravity push you down. Take two more deep breaths. And then you're going to gently release. Just hug your knees into your armpits again because you always want to reset that spine, recenter it. And then you're going to rock yourself up. Now let's go in the opposite direction. So we're going to come onto the knees and we're going to open them a little bit wider than the hips, toes together. Scoop your tummy in like a little cat stretch and then slide those fingers forward, reaching them away from your knees and shoulders. So this is that active shell stretch. You can also do a passive shell stretch where you just relax the chest down. But when you activate that core and round your back a lot more, you separate the vertebra, allowing them to free up more space.
walk over to the left side. Go as far as you can go and then reach that right hand over the left hand, scoop it away, still pulling the tummy in. You're going to feel the right side of your body stretching. It's a lovely one. Walk your hands over to the right side. Take your left hand over that right hand. Reach the hands away. Scoop the tummy and stretch. And then bring it all the way back to the center. You're going to roll your spine up. Let's just bring the knees in and take the left leg back, right foot comes forward. You try to get it parallel to the front of the mat, but it might not in the beginning, it might be down here. Either way, you slide that back leg backwards, point the toes and try and rest on top of that right calf, right bum, stretching into that right side. Relax the head, neck and shoulders. If you're a little bit high and you're quite tight, then you more than welcome to rest on those forearms, but if it gets too comfortable, I want you to reach forward, get a deeper stretch. And also try not lean to the right side. You want to try and keep those hips level so you've got gravity pushing those hips down. Let's walk it all the way up, swap it over. Let's bring the left leg forward, right leg slides back. We reach forward, scooping that tummy in. Relax the head, the mat. Let's take two more deep breaths. Try and really relax in this position. And then walk those hands back up. You're going to fling that leg forward. And we're going to come into a seated glute stretch, which is also going to help open up that sacrum. So a little bit of a difficult one to get into. We're going to take left leg under, right leg over, like so. And you're going to try and tuck that right foot as close to the left bum as possible, and that left foot as close to the right bum as possible. So it looks like that from the front and like that from the side. So you might be feeling a stretch already, in which case you just stay here and you gently lean forward. If you want more of a stretch, you grab opposite knee with that crease of the opposite elbow, and you're going to reach that right arm back, pull that right knee to left boot, Look over the right shoulder, lengthen spine, deep breaths. Release it. Let's really swiftly, smoothly swap it over. You're going to now take that left knee to the right nipple, reach that left arm behind you, lengthen spine, look over that shoulder and just hold. It's really like you're squeezing all the toxins out of those organs. Take one more deep breath in. And then release. Okay, for the second part of this video, you're going to need your chair. So just go grab your chair and find a nice spacious wall to push your chair up to. And then I'll see you back. We're back. Okay, so grab your chair. You're going to push it up against the wall for now. 
And for now, you're just going to sit right on the edge of it so that you can take opposite ankle. Let's do left ankle on right knee. Open it up into that figure four position and then just lean yourself forward. If you're super, super tight, you might not even be able to get that low. Otherwise, halfway, we rest on that leg. Otherwise, if you really want a good stretch, you reach forward over that leg. That arm can either go on the inside or the outside of that foot, whatever feels comfy. But just make sure that your bottom foot is nice and straight. You're not reaching it forward. You're not reaching it back. And then just relax the head down. Relax the shoulders. And you're really going to feel that nice stretch opening up the bum, opening up that lower back. Remember, just go as far as you can. You might not be this low, especially on that side that's giving you grief. And then lift yourself up. Let's swap it over to the other side. So right ankle goes onto that left knee. We fold forward, test it out, see how far you can go. Maybe you can go all the way down. Choose where your arm feels comfortable and then just hold. Take two more deep breaths. Scoop the tummy in, roll your spine all the way up. Now I've placed my stool, my chair, my little raised piece of equipment, whichever one you are going to be using. I've placed it right up against the wall here. Because now we're going to do a nice little open, it's going to open chest and it's going to open up that lower back. So if you're facing your piece of equipment, you're going to take the leg that's closest to the wall on that little step. You move the leg and that bum as close as possible to the wall and you're basically leaning on the wall. Now, the inner arm is gonna reach up, you're gonna twist, you're gonna open and hold. Now, if you feel quite tight, you can just reach that outer arm onto the wall and look to the backhand. If you feel like you want more of a stretch, take that outer hand, pull the inner knee and twist more. Really try and get that cheek, both cheeks, should I say, to touch the wall, so bum cheek and face cheek. Take a deep breath in. And release it, bring it back to the front. If that felt good, go back into it again, hold it for another set of 30 seconds. We're gonna spin it around to the other side. So facing that piece of equipment, we're gonna take that inner leg, as close as possible to the wall, bum, bum. You're gonna reach that inner arm, spin it around, look towards the hand. If you feel uncomfortable, you just put the hand on the wall. If you want more of a stretch, you grab that knee, pull yourself closer and see if you can get both cheeks to touch the wall. Lengthen your spine, squeeze that belly button in. Take a deep breath in. And then bring it back to the center. If that felt really good, then just keep doing it as many times as you like. Then we're going to move the equipment out the way. Last little stretch, just to kind of release that lower back. You're going to stand with your feet hip width distance apart. Let's roll the shoulders back, dip the chin, roll down, scooping the tummy in. Once your hands get to as low as you can go, slightly bend your knees, grab your elbows, let gravity pull you down. And you should feel it stretching in the shoulders, stretching in that lower back. Tummy's nice and tight. And just sway yourself side to side. Try to keep your balance though. Bring it back to center, go a little bit deeper, rest the chest on the thighs. 
release your hands, scoop the tummy in and roll that spine up. But remember, if you've got sciatica, that lower back is going to be a bit sensitive. So if you need to push yourself up with those hands, go for it. Open up the chest, open up the shoulders and release. Well done, guys. I truly hope that that helps with your sciatica and makes you feel a lot more comfortable. Just leave a comment below. Let me know what else you're struggling with and I can help you as much as possible. So until next time, take care. Bye.